time for Talk Fans. We are doing something a little bit different today. I'll pick some practice questions. We will work through it together. I'll give you the answer and explanations at the end. Leave me a star for each correct answer and fire for each incorrect answer. If you like this test question review series, please let me know. Your opinion is valuable to me. Without further ado, let's get into question it. Question one: What is the minimum hemoglobin concentrations in a finger stick for a male blood donor? A, twelve gram per deciliter. B, twelve point five grams per deciliter. C, thirteen grams per deciliter. D. 13.5 grams per deciliter. What is the keyword in these questions? Yes, that's right, male donor. Does it ring a bell for anyone? You still can change your answer before the time is up. I'll give you a hint. Don't let the words hemoglobin concentrations of a finger stick confuse you. Are there really a different hemoglobin concentration guideline for a venous puncture and a finger stick? The finger stick uses a lot less volume, so any amount of tissue fluid could lower your hemoglobin concentrations. With that in mind, would the requirement be less or higher for a finger stick sample? Times up. The answer is C, thirteen point grams per deciliter, and the keyword here really is the male blood donor. The finger stick part has nothing to do with it. It just there to confuse you. The required hemoglobin for females is higher than or equal to twelve point five gram per deciliter, with a hematocrit of greater than or equal to thirty eight percent. The required hemoglobin for male is a little higher at greater than or equal to thirteen grams per deciliter. With a hematocrit of greater than or equal to 39%, you will need to know the hematocrit as well as the hemoglobin because the questions could easily be changed from hemoglobin to hematocrit. The requirements for hemoglobin and hematocrit stay the same regardless of how the sample was obtained. We assume that the sample was obtained properly. This is where the good probabilistic technique comes into play. If the collector has a bad probotomy technique, for instance, did not wipe off the first drop of blood, the donor may be disqualified due to false low hemoglobin level. In this case, the reading would be lower because the sample is diluted with the tissue fluid. Factual type of question is easy. If you know the requirements, you can answer it. It is a straightforward type of question, so. Just remember your numbers, and you will do well in the exam. Moving on to the next questions, question number two: A woman wants to donate blood. Her physical exams reveal the following: weight, one hundred and ten pounds; pulse, seventy-three; blood pressure, one twenty-five over seventy-five. Hematocrit, thirty-five percent. Which of the following exclusions apply to this donor? A, her pulse is too high. B, her weight is too low. C, her hematocrit is too low. D, her blood pressure is too low. So for this question, the answer is C, low hematocrit. You might think why we have all these requirements. It is to protect the donor and the recipients. We don't want the donor enough to be our patient either. This is another donor requirement. It is a factual based question. If you pay attention to my explanation earlier, you have the answer for this one too. Let's review the donor physical exam requirements. General appearance: The donor must appear in good health. If you meet all the requirements but you don't feel well, you cannot donate either. The temperature less than or equal to thirty-seven point five Celsius or ninety-nine point five Fahrenheit. Blood pressure ninety to one hundred eighty. Pulse fifty-three 
50 to 100, weight 50 kilograms or 110 pounds. Hemoglobin hematocrit for women 12.5 grams and 38% hematocrit for male donor 13 gram per deciliter and 39% hematocrit. The puncture size free of leisure or evident of infections or drug abuse. Age greater than or equal to 16, no upper limit. Please note that there are few more requirements for a double rate donor. The female has to be at least 5 feet 5 inches tall, weight at least 150 pounds, and the hematocrit has to be at least 13 grams per deciliter. For milk, the height has to be at least 5 feet 1 inches, and the weight requirement is at least 130 pounds. The hematocrit is at least 13 grams per deciliter. Moving on to the next questions. Question number three. If we chain this up and say this donor is an autologous donor, is this donor okay to donate? The donor is donating for blood relative four days before surgery. The donor gets the doctor approvals, come to you, and you did the donor assessment. The results are the same as question number two. Would this donor be able to donate? Can this donor be autologous donor? The answer is yes. The donor would meet the requirements for autologous donor because the hematocrit requirement is lower for autologous, which is 33% instead of 38% for allogenic donor. Now you will have to take a look at autologous donor requirements. A lot of the requirements are the same as the allogenous donor, but there are some differences. The donor will need doctor order. The hemoglobins and hematocrit requirements for autologous donor is lower. The hemoglobins requirement is 11 grams per deciliter, and the hematocrit requirement is greater than 33%. Donation will have to be done more than 72 hours before surgery and the donor has to be at no risk of bacterial infections. Question number four. A potential donor has no other excuse than her weight. She weighed only 95 pounds. What is the allowable amount of blood, including sampling, that can be drawn from this donor? A. 367 ml B. 378 ml, C, 454 ml, or D, 373 ml? The answer is C. Donors are allowed to donate no more than 10.5 ml per kilogram of their body weight. The amount includes the sample used for testing, drawing at the time of collections. The calculations for a 95 pound donor is as follow. 1. You would chain the units to match, which you would have to chain from pound to kilograms by dividing the 95 with 2.2, so you will get 43.2 kilograms. Then you would multiply 10.5, and that would give you 453.6 ml. You can round that up and it would give you 454 ml. That means the answer is C. Let's talk a bit about low volume collections. What consider as low volume collections? One, if 300 to 404 ml were collected, we would label that unit as red blood cell low volumes. These low volume unit cannot be made into components such as plasma, cryo, or platelet. Two, whole blood volume is less than 300 ml was collected, you will have to adjust the anticoagulants in that bag. Question number five, how much anticoagulants do we need to remove if the donor weight is 60 pounds? Think about what you should be doing first. I would calculate how much the donor can donate 
then I'll calculate how much anticoagulant is needed for that amount. In normal circumstances, this donor probably won't be able to donate. But in case of research or autologous donor, there may be exceptions, so you do need to know how to calculate. So we'll go through the same as the previous examples, 60 divided by 2.2, which will give you the donor weight in kilograms, and it is 27.3. The donor only allowed to donate 10.5 ml per kilogram, so that means this donor can donate up to 286.7 ml. Once you round up, you will have 287 ml. To calculate how much anticoagulant is needed, you have to know the expected concentrations of an anticoagulant per unit, which is 14%. So 14% of 287, which gives you 40.2 ml. Since each collection bag was preloaded with 63 ml of anticoagulants, all you need to do is subtract 40 ml from 63, and you will get 23 ml of anticoagulant, which means you will have to remove 23 ml of anticoagulants from the bag. Blood, 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 blood. Low volumes allogeneic collection should be labeled as RBC low volumes. 2. Plasma and platelet from low volume units should be discarded. Plasma from low volume units has a higher concentration of citrate, that's why it has to be discarded. That's all I have for today. Give me a star for each question you got right and a smiley face for being here and doing your best. You deserve it. That's all I have for today. Did I miss anything? If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm more than happy to answer them. If I don't know, I will try my best to find out for you. Also, keep in mind that the information I put together here is the general practice at the moment. As time change, certain practice may change and different institutions may have different policies. So please keep an eye out for that. If you like my video and think it's helpful in any way, please share it with your friends and I shall see you all next time. As always, remember, your blood tell you the story of your health. Thanks for watching. Bye.